Good day and welcome back to Asia News, everyone. And here is the news for today with me, Vanessa. Victims and families of Indonesia Stadium Stampede incident demanding justice. The victims and families of Indonesian Stadium Stampede incident are demanding answers and justice after a football match stampede late Saturday, which killed 125 people. How could this have happened? How can the police allow this to happen? How could this have happened? How can the police allow this to happen? I'm still haunted and traumatized by the cries for help that night. I don't have the appetite to eat. I hope the police can take responsibility for this tragedy. I hope the police take responsibility for this tragedy. The stampede occurred at the Kanjuruhan Stadium in Malang, Regency of the country, after the home team of Arema lost to Persebaya Surabaya in Indonesian League football match. Authorities say 18 police officers who fired the tear gas are now in questioning. It has been several days after the incident and people are paying their tributes to the lives lost at the Kanjuruhan Stadium. Indonesian President Joko Widodo has ordered to launch an investigation into the matter, but he said the priority right now is providing care and support to the victims still in recovery. This is known as one of the worst sporting incidents in the world and the Indonesian Football Association has suspended all games until a thorough investigation is complete. Indonesia President orders security audit of all stadiums after deadly match stampede in Malang. Indonesian President Joko Widodo ordered a full audit of all stadiums across the country and told reporters an investigation into the stampede in East Java that killed at least 131 people must conclude as soon as possible. I have ordered a full audit of all stadiums and buildings to fix exit gates and positions of seats, gates and everything else so that the audience safety and supporters safety is prioritized. That is all I can say. Supporter itulah yang ingin kita utamakan. Saya rasa itu yang ingin saya sampai. He also said that Soccer's world governing body, FIFA, may help address management of the sports in Indonesia, having discussed the issue with FIFA President Gianni Infantino after a deadly stampede. Meanwhile, medics said some victims died of suffocation while others suffered head injuries. A police spokesperson said dozens of police officers have been placed under investigation and at least nine have been suspended. Indonesia formed an independent team to investigate football's deadly stampede. The Indonesian government has set up an independent team to investigate the stampede at the Kanjuruhan Stadium in Malang, which is one of the deadliest sporting events in the Indonesian history. Coordinating Minister of Political, Legal and Security Affairs, Mahmoud MD, said the Indonesian authorities have formed an independent fact-finding team to investigate Saturday's deadly stampede that occurred after a football match in East Java province. The minister who leads the fact-finding team told a virtual press conference that the team was assigned directly by President Joko Widodo to find out the causes of the stampede which had killed 125 people and injured at least 320 others and who would be responsible for the incident. The team members consisted of officials from relevant ministries and government institutions, professional football organizations, observers, academics and mass media. According to local reports, the Indonesian police have been under fire by the public as many believe that the stampede happened after the police fired tear gas against the crowds, sparking panic among spectators and a stampede at one of the stadium's exits. Authorities said nine officers had been removed from their post and 18 others are being investigated for firing the tear gas in the stadium. Experts noted this tragedy has a serious consequences to Indonesia's football industry as a whole. Gilang Widya Pramana, president of football club Arema, has also apologized for the tragedy. The football club said they are compensating the families of victims by providing each of them with 650 US dollars, but the survivors said they won't stop until the justice is served. Indonesia holds mass prayers for football victims. <laughs> Hai 
Hundreds of residents in Indonesia's Malang held a mass prayer in memorial of the victims of a fatal soccer stampede that left 125 dead and more than 400 injured. The local health department put the death toll at 131. The victims were mostly fans of the local Arema FC team in Malang. In one of the world's worst stadium disasters, hundreds of spectators were crushed as they tried to flee the overpacked stadium in Malang East Java. Participants of the memorial prayed and lit candles for the dead and the injured in the yard of the Kanjuruhan Stadium. According to the private football watchdog organization Safe Our Soccer, 86 people have been died in soccer-related violence in Indonesia since 1995 but the severity of the latest tragedy has shocked the nation. Experts are this government to take long-term plans against severe flood. Experts calls on the government to take long-term plans to deal with such terrible situation. Climate change is exacerbating the intensity of flooding events in Thailand. It will get more severe. We must have long-term plans. The warning signs have been there since 2011, but we haven't thought of the solutions. The Thailand capital Bangkok and central areas are bracing for heavy flooding. Floodwaters have turned districts in Ayutthaya province into islands and rescue workers have received many calls for help. Flooding is devastating on so many levels. In how six people live in all cramped into their tiny second story. Heavy seasonal rains have already impacted at least 45,000 households in nearly half of Thailand's provinces. Experts is urging the government to take swift actions and consider long-term plans to deal with severe flood. Japanese activists hold protests in Tokyo against dumping of nuclear polluted water. Japanese activists gathered outside the headquarters of the Tokyo Electric Power Company holdings, protesting the decision to proceed with the plan of discharging nuclear waste water from the wrecked Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant into the sea. The protesters also called on withdrawing the nuclear water dumping plan. Meanwhile, the Japanese government says on April 23 last year that they would discharge over 1 million tons of contaminated water into the Pacific Ocean starting in the spring of 2023. Waves of the public anger and serious concerns of the sea pollution have been triggered in and outside Japan. Struck by a magnitude 9.0 earthquake and ensuing tsunami that hit Japan's northeast on March 11, 2011, the number one and three reactors of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant suffered core meltdowns, resulting in a level 7 nuclear accident, the highest on the international nuclear and radiological event scale. South Korea has suffered trade deficit for six months after energy costs soar in the country. According to the statistics released by the Ministry of Industry, Trade and Energy of South Korea, that South Korea has suffered trade deficit for six consecutive months for the first time in 25 years due to surging energy costs. South Korea's trade deficit in September hit 3.77 billion US dollars due to soaring energy prices. In August, the trade deficit once approached the 10 billion US dollar mark, the highest level in 66 years. The data showed that South Korea's imports in September increased by 18.6% year on year to 61.23 billion US dollars due to higher energy prices. Among them, crude oil, natural gas, and other energy imports amounted to 17.96 billion US dollars, indicating a hike of 81.2% over the same period last year. The South Korean government required public institutions to save 10% of energy consumption from October and called on major companies and individuals to join energy saving actions. 
United States, United Kingdom and Singapore concerns on economic development after being on the Manufacturing Index Reference Line. The Purchasing Managers Index for the Manufacturing Sector in the United States and the United Kingdom and Singapore hovers around the 50.0 benchmark line of the index in September, triggering concerns about economic development. PMI is one of the leading indicators commonly used in the world to monitor macroeconomic trends, with 50.0 as the benchmark line. According to the latest data released by the Institute for Supply Management, that the United States manufacturing PMI in September came in at 50.9, down from 52.8 in the previous month. The Institute also said that the U.S. Manufacturing Employment Index stood at 48.7% in September, while the new order index for the manufacturing sector was 47.1% for the month. Meanwhile, according to the survey that the number indicated that the United Kingdom's manufacturing sector continued to slump at the end of the third quarter of the year, which would weigh on the country's GDP growth. Furthermore, analysis said due to factors such as failing overseas demand and higher transportation costs. Analysis said that a weak manufacturing sector will hold back Singapore's economic growth in the third quarter, raising concerns about a technical recession defined as the two consecutive quarters of negative growth. Well, that's the whole news for today. Enjoy your weekdays ahead. Stay safe and stay healthy.